You can lose yourself in this place. I'm not even going to lie to you. How, how could you lose yourself, though? Uh, partying, <laughs> drinking, meeting new people. If you have homecoming, with fake homecomings and like uh, streets filled with people, like dancing, graving and everything in you, 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 you'll just enjoy it. Yeah, a big yellow school bus and a bunch of drunk university students roll up to a house party on it. It's like, I'm so glad I came here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's the Milkman back in the thing for Milkman TV. And guys, despite what anyone tells you, one of the most important aspects of the university experience is a social life. But I think not only do certain institutions provide more resources, support, and opportunities than others, but they just have an atmosphere that complements the social aspect of human interaction better than others. So I got a tier list I've been working on for a while now. And shout out to YouTube viewer Samir. He wrote, rank universities by social life. And honestly, great minds think alike because I've been putting together this list for a minute and now it's time to drop it like it's hot. But just a disclaimer, of course there are more than 10 universities in Ontario, but I'm only going to cover those within the GTA area and surrounding, as well as those that I personally have had an experience with. So let's get right into it. Number 10, University of Toronto. Now at the bottom of the list, we have U of T, and yeah, although this is considered one of the most prestigious schools in Canada, I think their social life is in a dumpster fire. You can literally Google U of T and students ending it all, and the results will demonstrate how the two terms coincide. It seems as though the school's competitive nature, workload, and lack of student support has fostered an environment where the social experience is lacking. In fact, this idea is not solely demonstrated in the St. George campus, but students at UTM have explained the lack of support for mental health as explained here. There's a lot of students around you that are very depressed and uh, you have to really look for mental health resources. And students at UTSC have described the lack of things to do at the campus. Wow, you're saying go to St. George because there's nothing to do at UTSC. There's nothing to do here. It's so secluded. You see the window, you see the wilderness over there. Like that's it. Now on the flip side, U of T St. George is located in downtown Toronto. So if you don't mind heading off campus to find things to do or people to meet, then this campus may be for you. Also, it does have quite a few frat houses and sororities, as well as student clubs to participate in. Number nine, U Waterloo. Next is U Waterloo. And honestly, I was trying to figure out how or why this would rank better than U of T. And although I don't really hear about students ending it all due to the immense workload, you do hear about students breaking down due to the immense pressure they are under. I look over at this guy and he was bawling his eyes out. He was clearly under a lot of stress. His alarm went off on his phone. He turned it off. He wiped his face and then just kept typing. However, where this university shines is a fact that it's not in the Toronto area. And in my opinion, if you are from the GTA, I feel the student experience is less noticeable when you go to a university in the GTA because your social life doesn't really change due to your ability to commute. You don't have to make new friends, study, or chill at the university because everything you're accustomed to is close to home. Whereas at U Waterloo, you have to modify your lifestyle and actively expand your horizons since you are living in a new city. Additionally, while attending U Waterloo, you are also close to Wilfrid Laurier, which is known for having a great social life and student experience. So if you ever need to escape your studious environment, the opportunity is not too far away. Number eight, York University. York is not even known as a studious school, but I had to put it low on the list for a multitude of reasons. This school has so much potential, but based on my experiences there, the administration seems like they don't even care to create a better social environment. At the beginning of the school year, they throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink, great frosh, excursions, bus trips, varsity football games. But as soon as the initial alert is over, things get quieter than tumbleweed rolling in the desert. In fact, when I was there, their football team hadn't even won one game in over five years. And you would think it would be in their staff's best interest to shuffle things around a bit to enhance the school spirit. But the reason why all of this is more evident at York is because the campus is located in North York, which is not downtown. Therefore, even if your school doesn't want to create a social environment for you, 
there was nowhere else to go to fill that void. You are literally stuck on the campus or you have to take a subway train downtown to reconnect with other students. However, there is a small community called The Village nearby and if you're in the know, you can generally find house parties popping there. Number seven, Ryerson University. Another commuter school I'm gonna put on the list is Ryerson University. Ryerson is in the direct heart of the downtown Toronto core. So the campus is split into different buildings with little to no green space to even out the concrete walkways and walls. I had a image in my mind that Ryerson was gonna be a lot more um, campus design. So a lot more greenery, more fields, more sports and that sort of stuff. Just imagine you have a class at the Ted Rogers School of Management. Then on your way to Kerr Hall, you're required to walk by erratic middle-aged men and women who look like they're ready to pop off at any moment. Or the safe injection site that many believe contribute to the crimes and smell on or around the campus. And like there's just sections of like Victoria Street and Gould Street that just smell like, like dirt. Like I pointed out with you Waterloo, if you're from the GTA and you choose Ryerson, your social life really doesn't change due to your ability to commute. You don't have to make new friends, study, or chill at the university because everything you're accustomed to is close to home. A lot of times, commuter students just go to school, then go home. However, Ryerson scores higher than the rest because it seems like the student body is lit. They've managed to host frost concerts with headlining artists such as Drake and Future, and if you happen to have a spare between classes, you could visit the Eaton Center to shop or hit up the movies for a new release. Being in the heart of the city, you may not have to rely on a social life on campus, but perhaps create your own close by. Number six, Wilfrid Laurier University. Like U Waterloo, Laurier is located in the Kitchener Waterloo area. But in my opinion, this is where the similarities stop. You do not hear about the instances of students undergoing extreme pressure to excel in their studies here. In fact, when I was on campus conducting interviews, several of the students were either in the middle of classes, but took the time out to go on camera to give y'all the skinny regarding the Laurier experience. Hell, this girl just came from Tim Hortons, and rather than being more concerned about her tea or coffee cooling down, she wanted to help y'all out, which is really noble. Also, the university seems like it has a bit of a high school feel to it, so if you are hesitant about really large campuses, this doesn't seem to be one of them. In fact, in comparison to other campuses, it seems as though Laurier provides more of an intimate experience as described here. Everyone's connected, there's good energy, and it's just like overall, you just, you never feel out of place, I'd say. And when students say you can lose yourself from partying, having a good time, and meeting new people, you know your social life is on another level. You can lose yourself in this place, I'm not even gonna lie to you. How, how could you lose yourself though? Uh, partying, <laughs> drinking, meeting new people. You know, if you're not, if you're not really in charge of yourself like that, you lose yourself, you're not circle, yeah, yeah you have a problem. Number five, University of Guelph. So while Laurier student population seems a bit more upbeat, students at U of Guelph, in my opinion, seem a bit more laid back, calm, and collected. Similarly, when approaching people to conduct interviews, a lot of the students were willing to help and even provided stories about their exploits that a lot of students at other campuses would be less inclined to share. I wish I knew that there is a lot of surveillance, so if you're going to plan on doing something stupid, maybe rethink it. <laughs> And though U of Guelph is also known as a party school, there is a lot of green space if you want to kick back and relax for a picnic or to read a book. And if you're into animals, I've been told there's even wildlife such as horses and cows roaming the grounds. I would just say be aware of how like rural it is. Like, you know, it's the agricultural college, but it's really rural. Like there are cows on campus and it's like fun. But if you're not used to it, it's like a little bit of adjusting. Additionally, Guelph is considered a student town itself with malls to shop, bars and clubs, as well as events. So off campus, you will surely find things to do. Honestly, if I could have done it over again, I think this is one school I would have wanted to enroll in, as there's a reason why this university is considered a campus for hippies. Number four, Trent University. Before doing these videos, I didn't know too much about Trent University. But when I visited the Peterborough campus, I was like, where have you been all my life? Trent is like a small community hidden from all the craziness that goes on in and around the GTA. Hell, one student even said Uber didn't exist at the time I interviewed her. 
I wish I knew that they didn't have Uber here because I'm taking the bus or I'm walking, which is not fun in this really cold weather. But anyway, not only did the administration seem cool as hell there, but according to the students, the university itself supports the social atmosphere. Um, I mean, homecoming is pretty, pretty lit, I'm not going to lie. You didn't say that with too much enthusiasm. What's so lit about homecoming? Well, one of my greatest university memories was rolling up to a house party at homecoming on a big yellow school bus because the school chartered the school buses to go on like the route of the buses. And I just remember there's this one girl who got on the bus and asked the bus driver, they were like, where is this going? And this bus driver goes, wherever you want. And we rolled up to a, fu to a house party. It was like... So wait, this is a, a, a bus chartered by Trent? Yeah, a big yellow school bus. And a bunch of drunk university students roll up to a house party on it. It's like... I'm so glad I came here. <laughs> the same day I stepped on campus, the students said they were about to partake in an annual milk run, which sounded too crazy for me, even though I'm the milkman, because I went on a wet day, so there was mud all over the ground. But that didn't stop the community from having fun. Now, on top of what seems like everyone knows each other, the scenery is also amazing. There is this huge bridge that connects both sides of the campus, and all I could think about is the spring and summer memories that could be created there walking along it or chilling with someone special. Number three, Queens University. You already know it's good memories when this is a line to describe how a moment went down. The pier is where it's at. <laughs> what goes down at the pier or just whatever goes down at the pier, stay at the pier. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> to add a cherry on top, if the person tries to finish their description but bursts out laughing, it is probably even better than we imagined. So, this seems to be the sentiment regarding the Queen's experience. Located within very close proximity to what I believe the St. Lawrence River, in the town of Kingston, the campus has a reputation of being pretty cold during the winter. So it seems in order to offset the effects of the chill, students there tend to keep warm with the help of booze. That's right. From what I've been told, Queen's is known as a university whose social life revolves around the tipsy experience. Even to the point where people question if it's possible to have fun without the influence of alcohol, some partygoers may look at you weird if you don't drink, while others don't even mind. But one thing is understood, there will be a lot of beer pong, flip cup, and other drinking games going down. With this being said, I've also been told the town of Kingston itself doesn't have too much of a nightlife. So the majority of events are generally in and around the campus. And being at the edge of town, Queens definitely has a community element to it. From the engineering students who identify themselves with their cool, exclusive jackets, to the community members who find meaningful friendships with those around them, the social life at Queens is more than likely to satisfy those in search of it. Number two, McMaster University. So uh, before coming here, I did not know McMaster was such a wild party school and like every weekend you have parties in your residences and everything. You have, you have homecoming, you have fake homecomings and like uh, streets filled with people like dancing, graving and everything and you, 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 you'll just enjoy it. If, you, if you're a party guy, McMaster is the place for you. Look at these guys, man. Happy as hell. And as foreign students, they felt it in their blood and veins that they made the right choice. McMaster is in a sweet spot when it comes to social life. It is about 40 minutes from U Guelph, about an hour and 30 minutes from London, and about 50 minutes from downtown Toronto. So you have access to all types of social activities if you have access to a car. Hell, even if you don't, Hamilton has its own party scene that you can enjoy and take advantage of. Last time I was out in Hamilton, there was a section called Hesse Village where you can bar hop, meet new people, and experience everything the atmosphere has to offer. McMaster is also known for its FOCO, not to be confused with HOCO, which in 2019 was moved to the Reading Week weekend, allegedly to prevent all students from taking part. So supposedly the student-led FOCO was held in September, which saw over 2,000 students on Dalewood Street from Mac and other universities around Ontario. Number one, Western University. Lastly, but definitely not least, is Western University. And man, London is in a sphere of its own. The downtown area itself seems like it is specifically catered to take your mind off of studying. There are different patios, bars, and clubs for different types of tastes. It's a bit of a walk from the actual campus, but summer, spring, or fall day, you could probably soldier the exercise in anticipation of a good night. 
Now, one thing that Western is known for that a lot of other campuses do not have is a poppin athletics team. From what I've been told, the students attend football games in large numbers. I find this really reminiscent of the Hollywood films about college football, which really represents their school spirit. And you're probably thinking that since Western is number one for a social life, the quality of academics would be in the dump. Well, think again. From what I hear, the profs are very nice and treat you more than a number. And the quality of education there is comparative, if not better, than many of the other universities in Ontario. A sentiment that I heard at Western is that it is a work hard, play hard school. So you have the opportunity to take advantage of the best of both worlds if you are willing to make the investment. Lastly, you know the school is on point when the majority of the students tell you that not only was Western their first choice, but they wouldn't choose any other school if they had a chance. So guys, this is my list of some Ontario universities ranked by their social life. Remember, this is my opinion. So if you have one of your own, I would love to see your list in the comments below. Anyways, I hope this list was informative to you. And as always, it's a milkman. Until the next time, in between time, I'm off this easy path.